Ah, oh, g'day, welcome to Farming Live Australia. Today I want to show you and talk about my homemade fencing tools. These tools aren't my invention, but over the years I've come across different tools and some I've adapted and some I've changed to suit my own purposes. And I just thought I'd show you my homemade tools and adaptions that might help you out sometime. Stay till the end because I just want to show you a gem I found in my junk pile. A really unexpected find. The first thing I always do is adapt my fencing pliers. This is an old set and they haven't been done yet, so I'll demonstrate how I do that. This makes the pliers much more useful. So you can see here I've welded the piece of stainless steel to the pliers. The next step in the process is to cut the piece of rod off about 3 8 or 10 millimetres long. Then with the angle grinder, I shape it into a little knob. To make it nice and smooth, I use a chainsaw file and run around and make the groove nice and smooth. And this will become apparent why after a while. I just use the flat file to make the top nice and smooth and you can see we wind up with a knob that looks a bit like a capstan. This is the desired thing you want, a nice little knob with a groove in it that the wire can fit in and you'll see why. On this end of the pliers I've smoothed them all down with the flap disc nice and smooth and that'll become apparent as well. You can see here this wire is very loose. And I don't have any wire strainers with me. And I'm going to demonstrate how I can use the pliers to tighten this up really, really tight. First thing I'm going to do is untwist the old piece of wire where it was twisted up. And it's 8 gauge so it's really strong. Not the best filming technique in the world here but you'll get the idea. So you put the tail of the piece of strainer wire in the jaws of the pliers where it's closest to you. In other words behind the hinge of the pliers. Then I have the piece of wire over the little knob and just use it as a fulcrum and keep doing that till the wire is really tight. Here I'm just going to cut off the crappy bit of wire. Unfortunately it only leaves with a very short tail. But I've got this tool that I've made and it's just a piece of 3.8 stainless steel rod with a flattened end and a little hole drilled in it that's appropriate for the largest wire that I use to go through it. The other thing I do is chamfer the hole with a bigger drill so it's smooth on the edge. This wire being number eight and so strong I wouldn't be able to bend it with my fingers. I'll grab it with me pliers and put the tool on and as you can see it's quite straightforward just to bend it round and round. It does a really neat job and a really tight top. As often happens I've taken the tension up on the fence and everything's moved a bit and now all the other wires are loose. I'll just quickly tighten up the other one and demonstrate one more time. I'll take it slowly and try and give you a lot better view of what's actually happening with it. You can see now both the wires are nice and tight that I've done. I think the cow approves, so everything's good. This is a typical assembly where I've used a bit of wire, 8 gauge, to tie a rail onto a post. And I've just used a twitch there to tighten it up. And I've got the pliers smoothed down so that they work really well for twitching these things, you know, like cob and co's and twitches, etc and they don't grab in the holes and bind up. So what I've got here is a piece of 50 mil wide flat bar about 3 mil thick and it's really bigger than I want for this tool but it'll work and I'm going to draw it out. I've got the shape I want drawn out 
And as you can see, I was extremely scientific about how I drew that. Okay, so I've drilled three holes to make it easier to cut it out, and now I'm going to cut it out. I'll give her a clean up now with the normal disc and the flap disc and make it nice and smooth for me hands. Okay, so here we got a bit of plain wire. Bend it over. It's only got a very short end so I can't bend it with my hands. So I can get our new handy dandy tool, put it on here. And twist it up. We'll now get onto barbed wire and that's what this tool is intended for mainly. So here's a bit of barb and I want to twist that up but um, okay. So as you can see, we can twist it up with that and take it off. We don't have to have a hole to put it through. So that's what that tool's for. Here's the beginnings of the next tool and you'd be forgiven for thinking I'm trying to make a spade bit for drilling holes in wood. I'm not. I'll clean it all up with the angle grinder now and make it all neat and tidy. Now that I've cleaned it all up and it's all a bit tidier, I've got to cut a couple of slots in it. Again I'll knock the burrs off with the angle grinder to make it a bit tidier. So this tool is useful for tying small tie wire and where I've got the tool here now it's done up a bit too short and you'll see it'll break it off too, too short. I'll give it another go to demonstrate and this time I'll put the tool where it should be and you'll see that it leaves the appropriate length tail. What I would do normally is if I was going to make a whole heap of these ties, I'd cut all the ties to the, to the right length before I started. You don't have to wrap the wire around twice, I just do because it makes it stronger, that's all. This time I'll double the wire, just to show you how that works. And you can use thicker wire than this, but I don't think that it would in any way do 8 gauge or 10 gauge or anything like that, no way. Here's a close up of the job it does and as you can see it will be really suitable if you're trying to build a chook cage or something with lots and lots of little ties. As promised at the start here's the gem I found in the junk. A while ago a fella I know came in to home and he said oh I've been cleaning up and I've found all these old little tommyhawks. Do you want one? And I said oh yeah okay I didn't know what I was going to do with it. And I thought, ah, oh, probably some bit of Chinese junk. But I've just had a good look at it and cleaned up the top of it where it was all bent over from being hit with a hammer. And it actually says Kelly Axe Company USA. I don't know why, but somebody's been using it to stir up concrete. Anyway, I'm going to clean it up and put a handle on it. And I think it'll make a really nice little tommyhawk. So sometimes you can be lucky. Well, that about brings to a close this edition of Farming Live Australia. I really hope you got something out of that. I know I've used all those tools myself and always do use them. In particular, the one with the pliers where you put a knob on them, it's just unbelievably good. Really, really worthwhile doing. You'll save yourself a whole heap of trouble. And you got a whole heap of tools in one. You got pliers, cutters, strainers, a twitching tool, all in one. And look, it just makes your pliers that much more useful. It's unbelievable. Thanks a lot for watching this edition of Farming Live Australia. We'll see you next time.